All right. Um, hi, uh, I'm Adin Schmaman, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the DHT improvements uh, in GodKFS 0.5. So overall, um, we've got four things we're going to look at. Uh, one is the way in which the AutoNet service that Stephen mentioned briefly is uh, utilized by default in the DHT. Uh, the second is how we've cleaned up our routing tables. The third is the lookup algorithm, how you find stuff and how that's uh, been improved. And then finally, a little bit of the testing and how we sort of made sure that things are, are going to look good uh, on the network. So AutoNAT, cleaning up the DHT. We have this Kademlia network, which is uh, the algorithm that IPFS uses for its distributed hash table, where you basically just ask questions like, do you, you know, do you have the data X or do you know someone who has it? But what happens when you uh, cannot ask some of the people who are told, given to you as responses? You know, you're, you're told about 10 peers, you go talk to them, but six of them are unavailable. The, the network structure starts to degrade and the like mathematical properties that allow for sort of logarithmic lookup times start to fall apart. So the plan is you ask other peers if they think you're dialable. And you sort of collect that information. And if you decide that you, after you know, interpreting all the results from your peers, are not dialable, then you stop telling people that you are uh, part of the DHT routing layer, that you're a server. You are available to respond to queries, because you're not. You're unavailable. Um, we also have sort of a backup plan, which is there, where uh, you will defensively look at connections that come in and see, does this, look like a, does this look like a peer that other people can talk to? Do they have a publicly dialable address or all of their IP addresses look like localhost or, you know, uh, 192.168 types of addresses? All right, so we've cleaned out a lot of our routing tables. Uh, but now we've gotten rid of the bad guys. How do we make sure to keep some of the good guys in there? Um, before, we were trying to be a little defensive with our routing tables. Because there were so many undialable nodes, we said, let's try and shave off some of the undialables. If we only ever keep people around who we're connected to, then we're guaranteed that when we hear about a peer from someone that they're not offline because they're in the middle of being connected to someone else. This is nice, but what happens if your router blips and you lose all your connections? Now you're going to have to start like, you're going to have to like reset up your DHT from scratch from the bootstrappers again, which is very unfortunate. Um, what if your machine is just overloaded? You have, you know, a thousand really important and valuable bit swap connections or other application layer things. And so there, your uh, DHT connections keep getting killed because they're just less valuable to your application overall. You still know where these peers are. You can still ask them questions. The fact that you can't maintain a connection to them because you're out of resources doesn't mean you should forget them. And so now we only remove peers from our routing table if we've they've failed us we've either asked them a question and they've failed or they've been around a while and every time we ask them a question they just don't give us the responses we need and we find someone better who might give a response in time so then the lookup algorithm the thing that sort of you tend to look at as the culprit of is this fast or slow even though frequently it's the other two layers this the routing layer and then the whole substrate of peers underneath. That's problematic, right? Who do we ask? So again, Kademlia, you just keep asking, do you know anyone closer than X? And that's like the question you just keep on asking. Um, previously, with these routing tables full of bad peers because the lack of AutoNet integration and the fact that we were you know, losing peers because of you know, you know, intermittent disconnects or dropping connections would make things take a long time, both because of the failed dials, but also because 
the lookup algorithm needed to compensate for a lack of confidence in the like mathematical structure of the routing tables. Um, and as a result, we had to search more of the network. We couldn't say, oh, we think we're close because there might have been someone that was much closer. But now, because the, the structure looks, not, like, looks cleaner and is more stable, we can give up much earlier. We can ask, we can find the three closest peers in the network to the piece of data that we're looking for, the three, pe three of the 20 people that are supposed to have copies of what we're looking for. Uh, and that's enough because we should know, there should not be anyone any closer that we didn't know about because the structure of Kademlia is such that everyone should know the peers that are closest to them. And we can now trust that. All right, so testing. Let's let's see how this thing works. So a note uh, before we go into this is that the tests were done um, on this on test ground, right? Which is very helpful, but also an isolated network. Not going to have all of the same conditions as the real network. Not going to simulate all the conditions of a real network. Uh, you know, a couple of the big things at play were we set all the latencies to be about 100 milliseconds for round trip times. Um, and, and we could also control, you know, but we could control the network to say like what percentage of nodes look dialable or undialable. And this is what it looks like. This is how long it takes to provide as in tell someone that you have a piece of data. And you can see that the differences are enormous. Uh, the one side is what it would look like if the entire network was 0, 4, 23. Uh, and the right side is how long it would take if the entire network was 0 0.5. Um, again, this has the 100 millisecond latencies and other sorts of assumptions built in. But the discrepancy is really large. In particular, the 95th percentiles are very big because when the routing structure is a little bit off, you can sort of get lost in the network. Um, and now you won't. Uh, this is effectively how finding the first provider. This is how long it takes for you to start downloading data with BitSwap. Uh, and that's gotten faster, but not quite as fast as that. Um, and then finally, IPNS get times, which were also quite slow. As you can see, much slower than the IPFS times. Uh, and those have gotten a lot faster, too. All right, well, that's been uh, a crash course to what we've been up to with DHT improvements. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, uh, I think we've got a little bit of time.